The recording has started, Chair Ward. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is a meeting of the organized. You went mute, Chair Ward. Sorry about that. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm back. Uh, the Organized Residential Waste Hauling Committee uh, is called to order at 6.01 p.m. I'm Stephen Ward, Chair. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Chair Ward. Present. Vice Chair Green. Present. Member Borman. Member Borman. Member Brinker. Here. Member Brown. Member Brown. Present. Member Frazier. Here. Member Hupka. Did you say Brenda Hupka? Yes. Sorry, I was just cutting out. Here. Member Kawanabe. Here. And Member Lay did send an email that she would not be attending. Director DeAndrea. Deputy Director Lundquist. Present. Member Borman. Chair Ward, I think we have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of administrative notes before we start. Uh, first of all, uh, Maria has an appointment with City Council tonight, so she will be joining us later. Uh, but if I heard correctly, we have uh, the Deputy Director with us uh, to present her part or to answer any questions if they do come up. Uh, secondly, uh, Member Adams, who has joined us previously, uh, tendered his resignation from the committee today, so he will not be joining us in the future. Uh, the rule has been called. The first order of business tonight is approval of minutes from the previous session. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I have just one small correction to them. Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, it is on PDF page five about the trucks. Uh, you could do a word search for trucks. Uh, it currently says for awarding a contract, include among many other things, the environmental attributes and admission profiles of the trucks. And I would suggest changing that to, instead of for awarding a contract, change that to say for evaluating the vendors. And then instead of admission, change that to emissions. So the the corrected one would read, for evaluating the vendors, include among many other things, the environmental attributes and emissions profiles of the trucks. And that doesn't change the content, it just clarifies what we were um, referring to. Lorraine, did you catch that? Yes, I did, Chair Ward. All right, uh, so uh, I take it then, uh, Christine, that you would like to move the minutes with that change? Yes, I move to uh, I move the min minutes with that change. Is there a second? Second. I can second that. Oh, sorry. Jeff was first on the draw there. Moved by Christine, okay. seconded by Jeff Frazier. Uh, and uh, Lorraine, if you would please call the roll. Chair Ward. Vice Chair Green. 
abstain. I, I was not present. I was really sick. And I th just wanted to say thank you all for postponing the things that I was involved in. Member Borman has not joined yet, so. Member Brinker? Yes. Member Brown? I'd like to abstain. Member Frazier? Yes. Member Hupka? Yes. Member Kawanabe? Yes. Back to you, Chair Ward. All right, so the minutes are approved. Uh, which brings us to our first order of business, public comment. Uh, for the members of the public who have joined us, uh, the Zoom meeting has a raise hand function. Uh, I will call you in the order uh, that I see your hand raised. Uh, the first person who has indicated that they would like to speak is T. Williamson. Uh, so T. Williamson, uh, you have the floor. Hello, thank you for letting me speak. Um, creating this single hauler trash is just another shady way in which City Hall will use to siphon more money out of the citizens. Nobody wants this, except certain city council members, staff, and the various cronies they fill their committees with, like this one. What's worse is you've picked the absolute bottom of the barrel of trash companies, waste management. I like the company we use, they have never let us down, but here you are trying to force the infamously terrible waste management on everyone. The sad thing is no one's even trying to make it not look like another sleazy Inglewood backroom deal because that's exactly what it looks like over here with the honest folks. You know, the real reason certain streets are being torn up is the constant and daily presence of construction vehicles that come that come to tear, tear down nearly every home, every single family home sold in Inglewood, then build disgustingly ugly and poorly built multi-unit dwellings in its spot. If you are so sure people want this garbage shakedown, put it on the ballot where it's supposed to be. Thank you. Pamela Beats is next, Ms. Beats. Oh, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, please go okay. ahead. Sorry, I couldn't get unmuted. Um, thank you. You know, I, you know, I have some significant concern, concerns about this. And one of the first is cost. Uh, the second is, you know, I, I feel again that as Englewood re residents, we're not really informed of what's going on and more importantly, what it's gonna cost us. And in thinking about this issue, I thought about what changed. So for me, what changed about what a year and a half ago, all the trash companies decided they weren't going to do alley pickup anymore. And on my block, probably 80% of the people used alley pickup. Some people do have garages that load out to the street, but for the last 20 plus years that I've lived here, everyone had alley pickup, it was easy to do. Um, no one really had any complaints except for about particular service. So the only thing that changed is that the trash companies decided they weren't going to do alley pickup. And, you know, my feeling was it would be pretty simple for Inglewood to tell trash companies that if they wanted to do business here is maybe they should just continue with alley pickup. And the only company that was willing to do that was waste management, which isn't my first choice, but at least they come down the alley uh, because these um, trash cans are pretty unmanageable and impossible and I know there's been some comments about um, you know a lot of trash trucks on the street but the trash trucks are on the street because they're coming up the alley and down the alley they're going for recycling up and down the alley sometimes and then they're doing trash pickup and recycling on the street so it's where people are picking up that's actually increasing the truck traffic so 
you know, and I know recycling seems to be a big issue for people. And I'm going to say, I've been recycling since it's been a fringe event. Um, so don't tell me how important it is. But I don't recycle now because I can't haul my trash can down to the street. And, you know, I'm really concerned about the cost. I mean, can Englewood guarantee it's going to cost me less than what I'm paying now? And, you know, am I going to pay for services that I don't want? And I think competition is the, um, you know, is the foundation of cost effectiveness. The competition is the foundation of capitalism. That's what keeps these companies doing our service better. Not a, you know, because I don't think Englewood can guarantee the cost is what I'm getting right now. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Beats. Uh, Claudine Berger, you're next. Ms. Berger, if you're speaking, you'll need to unmute your microphone. We cannot currently hear you. Okay, sorry about that. Thanks for your time. Um, it feels to me after 30 something years here in Inglewood that the new climate in Inglewood is impose more fees, impose more taxes. And if a fee goes up, you call it a fee, we call it a tax. The new climate feels like there's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of one hand washes the other. There is a lot of, we can stick it into our own pockets if there is a profit to be made. And I find that absolutely outrageous. I find the underhandedness of how that trash service is imposed on us, like big brother. I don't need a big brother. Trash service is easy to get. There is no environmental advantage to one trash service. What guarantees us citizens that I'm making this up, you have a five-year contract, they're not gonna raise the fees every year that we have to pick up because you graciously will pass it on to citizens. It's violating our rights that it's not on the ballot. Every neighbor I have asked about this has no idea you're doing it. Nobody wakes up in the middle of a pandemic and says, oh, let me get to the internet and see what city council is up to, or a subcommittee that is imposing trash on you. I find that outrageous that it's not on the ballot, and I hope this is being taped. And if you get a new trash service that is imposed on us, then there are administrative costs associated with that. But guess what? Probably are $200,000 passed on to citizens, I am sure. How did you choose the company? It's not the best company out there. It never has been. So what's the kickback that citizens can prove but has to exist? because there are better companies out there. The fact that it's environmentally better is complete trash. Of course it's not. Why would it be? If a company picks up trash, they pick up trash. I'm completely against the compost composting thing because I compost my own, I got a backyard. I don't need to have to pay for that as well. Recycling, if you do research on that, not every citizen needs a recycle thing because most plastic bottles, water bottles, go in the trash. And if you research it, not one company will tell you that it's cheaper to recycle than to make new ones. They're making new ones. It goes into big trash somewhere in a valley where we dispose it. So that makes no sense. Um, how long is the contract for? How come we can't opt out? How come we are forced to do something that nobody knows it's going to come? Again, it's Big Brother watching and I want it on a ballot. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Berger. Next up uh, is a name that I am probably not going to pronounce correctly, Vannevar Fussell. Yes, uh, howdy there. Um, 
This is Van with uh, Compost Colorado. Um, thank you so much for the committee for having this uh, session. And thank you all so much for helping your community uh, live a little bit more sustainably. Um, obviously, the first several folks who spoke have concerns about how, uh, why this is happening. And I just want to address that first and say that there are so many studies that show that by having a single hauler, that there'll be reduced emissions, there'll be uh, improvements on road conditions. And so um, I, uh, I encourage the concerned citizens to, uh, to research that. And I'm, I'll, be, I'll be sure to share any of those resources to this group. Um, I operate this company here called Compost Colorado, and we, uh, we collect compost in Broomfield through Highlands Ranch. We grew 300% last year, and we are excited about the upcoming RFP uh, through this group. Um, my, uh, I think one of the, the concerns I have is that you are, you're going to do a great job focusing on education, particularly with the recycling and, and compost pieces. Um, a lot of folks are, are not quite familiar with the importance of, of composting and, and how to compost appropriately. And so I think that um, a good proposal should emphasize how they're going to be educating the public on how to compost, uh, including um, compost collection programs in schools. Um, the city of Denver's service has a compost, uh, they have a compost coordinator strictly committed to educating schools and faculty. I think that is, uh, is a part of this puzzle that should be addressed in um, the RFP. Um, furthermore, um, I think the uh, disposal and completing the loop element of the RFP should also be addressed, um, particularly when it comes to organics. Um, right now, most of the organics along the front range are going to centralized organics processing facilities out you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of miles away from the uh, metro area. Um, while this, these organics can be processed locally um, and be returned back into the soils and given back to uh, the community. And so I would um, encourage this, this committee to, um, to put the, uh, the disposal and completing the loop elements into, uh, into this. And um, yeah, again, thank you for, thank you again for having this open to the public and I look forward to, uh, to participating. Chair Ward, can we ask questions? Uh, sure. Okay, I would like to ask this gentleman, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Mr. Foss Fossil, is that correct? Oh, yes. Dan. Okay, sorry. Um, can you tell me where you live? Um, yes, um, I, uh, I live in, uh, in Boulder. I recently moved from, from Denver to Boulder. Our company is located in Denver. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Next up is Cynthia. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, um, good evening. I have several concerns about the process that um, the single hauler trash service committee has taken. Actually, it's not the committee, it's the bureaucracy that is the city of Inglewood. Um, I have lived here for 24 years. We have voted down single hauler trash three times. The fact that this is not on the ballot speaks volumes to the integrity of the process. Um, passing by the, the obvious problems with the process this, the city is going through. Um, I have issues with Inglewood citizens being forced to pay a government set amount for their trash um, and having it rolled on to the water bill because that can be a lien can eventually be put against your property for that. And I don't think that that is appropriate for the trash service. I also don't think it's appropriate for the city of Inglewood to uh, award a monopoly. I don't think that's good for our economy at all. I also have had problems with waste management. They didn't pick up my trash for three weeks in a row. 
then I canceled my service, then I actually had to pay an attorney to write them a letter to get my refund back. So I didn't appreciate that, and this was in 2017. Um, I don't appreciate being forced into the op service options. I would rather have a choice. Everything that I have read about recycling in the United States says it's less than 20% of the materials we put in there because Asia Pac has stopped buying our refuse. So there's no longer the demand that there once was. And so I haven't recycled in to over two years since I last saw the um, PBS special on that very issue. I also get the New York Times and they put out articles saying the exact same thing. It's not worth my money. At this point, the technology is not there for this. The other things I, I uh, have an issue for is how the city is going to administer this program. It's going to ch charge us for two new bureaucrats and a bureaucrat heavy government, city government. And how are you going to handle the situations with waste management? I already know they exist. I'm not the only one on my street who has had issues with them. I had a neighbor that followed them because they picked up her recyclables with the trash truck and took it to the dump. So they don't have the best reputation here in Inglewood. Also, the way that you will be billing it on our water, um, when we don't get our trash picked up, we don't get the credit. I understand you are gonna take the credit away from us. So it completely removes the consumer's voice in trash service here in Inglewood. And I also think that this is unfairly, again, putting the onus on the homeowner and not the growing apartment, condo, and commercial part of our economy here in Inglewood, because we as homeowners have had an unfair burden in the current growth model. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, next up, Marge. I wanted to ask Cox Cynthia a question. Oh, go ahead, Carson. Uh, thank you for speaking, Cynthia. I, I was, I've been taking notes on everything just to try and keep track of everything. I didn't understand what you were talking about towards the end there about credit. Can you repeat that, please? I was informed, and this may be wrong, okay, but I was informed under the model that you're looking at, when I don't receive trash service like waste management did all those years ago, three times they didn't pick up my trash three weeks in a row, I demanded and got a credit, although I had to get a lawyer. Now, what are you going to do for Inglewood citizens when their trash is not picked up like that? I understood that, that any credits you were going to get back, not the individual citizen. I'm sorry to interrupt. Someone is watching TV right now. We can hear your television. Uh, so if you would either mute your television or mute yourself, uh, we can continue the meeting. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. Please continue. Th thanks for clarifying, Cynthia. So what you're talking about is the proposed penalties, and there is open discussion about that. And you know, I'm not going to respond right now, but thank you for um speaking all right uh marge troxel is next yeah hi um bear with me i'm unfortunately recovering from covid so i may go into a coughing fit but first and foremost i have to say that there is absolutely no way the city of inglewood should be considering anything other than putting together a proposal and taking it to the voters. I live on a block that has many elderly people. They don't go to Zoom meetings. They don't get emails. They don't get texts. You are excluding such a humongous percentage of Inglewood residents from being a part of this whole decision-making process. To say nothing of the fact that I went to several of the meetings where they talked about you know, what would you like to see? You know, how, how would you feel about, you know, should we have levels? Should we have this? Should we have that? And I can tell based on this proposal, you are a long ways away from what my expectation of what the proposal was going to be based on those meetings. Specifically, the 
you're going to charge me every month on my water bill, and then you're going to make me pay an administrative fee for that. I have no idea what the fee is going to be. And is it going to be more than what I'm paying now? And what's the point of saying after a year I can drop out if the whole idea is to reduce the trash trucks in the neighborhood? So after a year, I say, I want out, and everybody else on my block says, we want out, and the trash trucks are right back. That makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. And by the way, I want one of those $80,000 a year jobs. <laughs> That's a lot of money. That's a damn good paying job. And I think this has to go to the voters. Thank you. All right, thank you, Marge. Uh, next up, C. Ann Dickerson. Um, am I unmuted? We can hear you. Okay. Uh, thanks for hearing me. Uh, as it stands, the proposal exempts apartment buildings and commercial uh, buildings, and they're the ones that generate the most trash. So the burden falls entirely on single family homeowners. The proposal in general is a violation of individual uh, property rights of owners and too costly to the city and homeowners and quite unnecessary. I agree with Cynthia and Marge, uh, so some of this will be redundant. Waste management is the company that makes the most mess and makes from five to eight trips down the street and still misses at least one customer every trash day. Mandatory recycling is wrong. No recycling is actually done and we shouldn't have to pay for it. Nobody's buying our trash anymore. And the few companies that do recycle require glass to be clean and unbroken and unchipped and separated. Ditto for paper and cardboard, which waste management does not do. They dump all into one truck overhead, which leaves a lot of trash blowing over the street and glass is broken and cannot be recycled due to contamination. Many of the companies that might take the recycling from them or directly from homeowners have gone out of business because there is no profit, much less can they cover their cost, or they won't accept any recycling from waste management. It all ends up in the trash heap because it's all contaminated. The plan requires a 96 gallon trash container. At least one third of the citizens, the elderly, cannot handle that size container even empty. I have no room on my property for such and it would take me six months to fill it up anyway. Many elderly do not create much trash, less than a five gallon bag a week. Why should we have to pay for weekly service, much less recycling? Why do we have to opt out and are forced in one year for the first year to take a service we don't want, can't use, and is a violation of our property rights. Originally, we were assured no need for additional staffing. Why are we now adding close to $200,000 to staffing, including benefits per year, when we can't balance the budget of the city now? Let the trash companies bear their burden rather than violating rights and adding to our utility bills, which are already almost unsustainable for the average homeowner. This started out as a pilot program proposed with a one-year contract. A seven-year contract is a violation of TABOR and an unnecessary cost to the city and consequently homeowners who bear the burden and the only burden. Any such scheme should be reconsidered and voted upon by the citizens at the election. And as far as uh, that one gentleman said, well, there's all these studies that show it reduces emission to have single hauler trash. The way it's set up right now with waste management making this many trips, one hauler, when you only have one or two trash days a week, require more trucks, larger trucks, and therefore just as much emissions. And most of the problem with the infrastructure, uh, uh, the, alleged, uh, the alleged damage to roads, comes from a concrete truck or those huge cranes or the demolition 
uh, units, you know, the big ones that have the kind of the crane in the bucket that knock down everything. Those are 10 times heavier empty than a full trash truck. So that's really no justification for doing this. I don't see any benefit to the citizens, greater cost to the city and to the citizens. And this is a violation of our constitutional rights and our right to our property. I don't want any 90 gallon heavy trash can on my property. I've got no place to put it. Thank you, Ms. Dickerson. Uh, next in line is uh, Christine Nielsen. Great, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, my husband and I are relatively new residents to the Inglewood area. We actually happen to live on the Denver and Inglewood uh, city county line. And since we first moved in, we've literally had four and five trash companies. And the reason being, and I think the first lady spoke about it, was because these trash companies stopped picking up in the alley because they were doing a lot of damage or whatnot. So since we've been here in three years, we have had to pay the fees to start trash service and then get delivery, right, of two bins or recycling in a trash bin of like 75 bucks each time, and then had to start paying, you know, $12 per bin monthly fee. So after the fourth time, we said, gosh, we're paying so many fees and pickup and delivery of their recycling canisters. In addition to the monthly fees, we're just going to go to Home Depot and buy our own 96 gallon bins, right? Because it doesn't make sense for us to continue to pay these pickup and drop off and monthly fees. So now we have spent $800 and own our own two trash bins, right? We've stopped recycling because we, like the other ladies, I know it just goes into one big bin, right? So why am I paying extra for that? I'm not interested in composting, but we're with Republic Services. And for the first time, they come through the alley, they pick it up, they put our bins back where they found them. We cannot physically drag our 96 gallon bins down to the street. And so that's why for us, it's so important that we have alley pickup. And, and I will tell you, people talk about the, the roads and this and that. The city, whoever they hired to come and grade our alleys this year, have made our alleys worse than they've ever been. And I mean, it's bad. I mean, somebody needs to be driving down these alleys and looking at the damage that the graders did to not the trash companies. And I believe that this should go to the voters. I don't believe that we should have to, to go with a service if we're happy currently. We should be able to opt out from the beginning. And, and if you are forcing this on us, we should be able to opt out altogether of recycling and compost. And we should be able to use our own bins that we've paid good money for, right? That are the same as anybody else, right? Um, and not have to pay all these additional fees and charges. And I can tell you, we did have waste management once during all this time, and we canceled them too because they missed our trash multiple times. It, it was just a really bad experience. So finding out that you guys are looking to move forward with waste management is really disappointing. And, and I just don't think it's something that, <laughs> I, I don't know, we're, we're terribly upset. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nielsen. W.W. W. is next. Hi, thank you so much for letting me speak. So again, I, I'm, I'm fairly new to Inglewood myself. Um, we are actually current um, customers of waste management. And as a current customer, I would never recommend them in a broad stream to others. Uh, we have had nothing but issues with them since we've started our, our pickup. And unfortunately, we are bound to them um, because they're the only ones in our neighborhood that are doing alley pickup. Um, but they are, I think someone had mentioned it before, they are probably at the bottom of the barrel of, of trash hauling services. 
Um, I do think themed with all other speakers tonight that this is something that really needs to be presented on a ballot. This isn't something that a small committee can, can move forward with that really drives across all the citizens of Inglewood. This is something that everyone needs to vote on. We had several amendments and, and things that we voted on this year, and this should have been included in that or should be included in this November's ballot so that the, the citizens of Inglewood can choose. Um, additionally, I think it's somewhat disingenuous that someone that's participating in an RFP for composting speak at a committee meeting like this that's not even part of the city of Inglewood as a resident. Uh, so I just want that noted as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Jan McCoy. Let me see if I can get my video on as well. There we go. And Mr. Ward, is it all right if there's a husband and a wife here tonight. We both chose to join in, in one camera shot here. Can I let my husband speak and then can I join afterwards? Would that be acceptable? All the better. Just keep in mind, uh, we're asking people to keep their comments to three minutes. So. That's fine. We, we aimed it towards that. So let me turn the camera to him and I'll introduce you to my husband, Roger McCoy. How do you do? Thank you for having us. Uh, we're in District 3, um, but I feel like this is a a pure example of a government overreach. It should be on the ballot without question. Um, it lacks the quality and truly performing um, of a service that is helping the, the public and public's need and is not necessary. Uh, many people have very low and uh, or needs uh, for this service. I, as a person, can take my trash to uh, my office. Um, a low usage person may also share those services with somebody else and not have to pay all of this, this, these funds. There is no provision for an opt out and that is wrong. If you would like to, to do something, uh, investigate the, the services that have been um, done in different cities and you will find that they are extremely unhappy with what has happened. Um, many people can uh, not handle the canisters and it's necessary then for certain people to have the canisters that they can handle. Um, the, another uh, layer of government or, or department is very expensive and again, it's not necessary. Um, in my area, the collection companies are respectful and don't uh, leave residue trash behind. And I haven't found in my travels that they have, uh, others have, have had that problem. Uh, if a problem occurs, such as missing a pickup, having a government department or sh is slow or even uh, unhelpful. If the individual has a problem, they can address the company themselves and get it resolved. Uh, if we require special needs or requests, doing it through the government uh, bureaucracy is slow or impossible. And the individual can request a direct, you know, request it directly from the company. If that need is not possible, then the individual can find another company um, to perform that. Um, the individual needs government in some instances. I can't go out and, and make the road in front, but this is something that the individual can handle and be responsible. So I really encourage this not to be anything but on the ballot. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McClay, Ms. McClay. Flip it around here. Um, I'll just Take a moment to say that um, don't think you've lost audio here. I just have some 
a, a unique way of presenting what I want to say this evening. Um, we live in District 3, just so you know the approximate location. Here are my concerns regarding your plan to change the ability of Englewood citizens to continue to choose their own trash provider to a plan that without going to the vote of such citizens will force residents into a single hauler provider system. I'm not done yet. So you ask yourself, what was that silence all about? It was uncomfortable, wasn't it? And it was awkward and perhaps you thought I'd lost my place or my ability to communicate. I'm sure you wondered what I was thinking. I think that's my very point and why I did it this evening. It's how I feel about the manner in which this plan has been handled. It's been rather silently formed without the voice of citizen input. Little effort has been made to communicate and I most definitely feel I must ask you what you were thinking to draft this plan without citizen input. Tonight, my hope is that you will hear, not just listen, to this small tip of the iceberg citizen concern you're hearing and citizen disapproval of the terms you feel entitled to commit Englewood residents to. I'm concerned about contract transparency. What are the terms between the city of Englewood and waste management? Who else was invited to bid on this? What promises have been made by each party in this agreement to the benefit of the other party? We all know that the bottom line is financial profitab profitability, but there are portions of this plan that are, that are wrongly put in the pockets of the city and not returned to the resident if there should be an error in trash pickup on a certain week. This is unjust. Two years ago when we moved into Englewood from 34 years in Denver where they had dumpsters in the alleys, we looked at pricing and waste management was outrageous by the time they added in fees on their container fees and setup fees. Complaints were everywhere on sites like Nextdoor. This is probably the most hotly contested uh, discussion that goes on there is who the heck can pick up your trash and do it responsibly. One by one, those companies that could not provide cost effective and reliable service were bought out or left. That's the beauty of competition. Now you choose to remove this option. This too is unjust. You remove the negotiating ability of the people to compete for what they need. We personally now have a provider that gives us a free cart, a two year rate guarantee, a flat rate price and no cart deposit. We choose if we recycle because that's an added expense. The city does not choose for us. We urge you to keep the choice in the hands of the citizens and put this to a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCoy. I have one more hand raised here, Matthew Mitchell. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just a, a couple thoughts listening to I don't know. a couple thoughts just listening to our fellow citizens comments this afternoon, this evening. Um, one, I, I think I, I, I stand in agreement to say that uh, consumer choice is something that is a hallmark of hallmark of, of how people make decisions about uh, quality of life, things that they want in their life. And, and, you know, the garbage component is a messy part of, of our lives. It's a, it's a necessity and one that I think should be driven by consumer choice. Uh, taking into consideration the role of, um, the role of procurement, uh, the role of, of what legally binding proposals um, have gone through the process to arrive at this decision, I think um, is a necessary part of government, but when it comes to uh, affecting the choice of Inglewood citizens and those in particular that own residents, um, I feel like, like there hasn't been an opportunity um, to be more informed, uh, not to say that there hasn't been opportunities uh, to be informed, 
thought I sympathize with um, some of the various geographies in our diverse community. We've got um, hills, we've got driveways, we've got uh, different challenges that that have to be faced with varying levels of ability to be able to complete basic necessary um, requirements to take out your trash. And so I'm not sure that that's being taken into consideration. Um, some, you know, it, it may be that there's some trailing liability regarding uh, ADA requirements that the city hasn't necessarily thought through in this, in this uh, endeavor. I also think it's deeply unfair that residents are, are saddled with this cost uh, and that they don't have a choice. I also think it's deeply unfair that large, uh, these new large uh, apartment complexes, condos, um, while they also maintain contracts uh, for their service that they are not also uh, subject to the fees that come with uh, the difference between owning a home and not. So I do think uh, this merits further uh, discussion with the general public before finalizing a contract. Um, I think in the spirit of transparency, it probably makes sense to bring this to ballot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, one more hand raised, Jamie B. Jamie B, if you're speaking, we cannot currently hear you. I show your mic is unmuted, but I'm not hearing anything coming from your end. Just a few more seconds and then we will go back. There is a raise hand function. I see someone named Dwayne who is physically raising his hand. Uh, you should check the controls on the panel. I see you there, Dwayne. Uh, we'll go ahead and skip over Jamie B because we're not hearing anything. Uh, you can go ahead and unmute your microphone, Dwayne, and give us your comment. Hello there. <clears throat> I've been in Inglewood since 1969 from being a 12 year old son and basically being grown up around here. And I've seen a lot of things happen in Inglewood. Now I've bought my house in 2000 with my mom. And then again, in 2006, bought it myself here on Oxford. I guess I'm in section three or whatever. Um, but on Oxford, there's a lot of different companies that come through and service all these houses and stuff. But I see a lot of them that only have small trash cans because all of my neighbors and I'm in my 60s are generally in the later 60s or 70s or even 80s. And I use a snowblower and help them out. And they, they're really appreciative of that. But for trash, I don't see them being able to move a 96 gallon container out to the street. And um, likewise, myself, I, I, I'm single here with my dog and I have maybe one bag every week maybe two sometimes when I've got more stuff and there's times that I don't put it out at all. And I definitely don't recycle because it wouldn't pay for even to do that. Um, in everything I've heard tonight from everybody, I have not heard a single person say, this is a good idea. And I agree with every one of them. There's, I mean, luckily I'm on Oxford and I, I don't have to worry about an alley. Um, growing up, we did. And, but I agree that this needs to go to the uh, voters. Uh, from being in Inglewood this long, I've got a lot of friends that I've talked to about this. And there, everyone again that I've talked to says the same thing, that this is a very bad idea. Um, for myself, I'm a disabled vet and if, and I've tried waste management and when I decided to leave them, they offered to match the price that I was going to be going to the other one. So I stayed with them for another year, except for finally when they kept missing and kept missing, it was, I mean, I don't have much trash, but when I do, I'd like it picked up. Um, if people 
wanted this to happen, I think you would have a lot of people here tonight rather than, like I said, everybody I've heard say, take it to the voters, period. And I agree with them. So myself and all my friends I've talked to, take it to the voters. You'll see probably about an 89% that says, eh, no, let it go. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, we have another, Jesse. Hi there. How are you doing? Go ahead. Oh, can you can you can you hear me there? Yes. Please go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, the the one thing I was curious about, and forgive me if uh, if it's been addressed, and I haven't heard it yet. Um, is there kind of an estimated, a rough idea what the what a price might be, look like for a typical household um, from the studies and stuff done, as far as the bid done? Um, is there kind of a rough number there at all that's been, I know that that probably is going to vary as things, you know, with the specifics, but anything that's been discussed so far? So I, I understand that you have that question. Uh, this unfortunately is a time for public comment, not for Q&A. Uh, so we're going to have to pass on answering that specific question. One thing I will note is that the city did receive two requests for proposal or two proposals based on the request for proposal that already went out. Both of those have already been rejected. Uh, and and so uh, there is no active proposal as, as we are speaking right now. Oh, okay. Okay. No, just curious. Thank you. All right. Uh, so I think that is going to conclude our public comment section. I'll just note for committee members who don't have clocks near them, it is uh, of 6.53, uh, almost an hour into our meeting. Uh, I will open the floor up at this point. I have a few things to say in response to public comment. Uh, I'm sure some of the other members do. Uh, Excuse me, do your board. Yes, go ahead. You do have four additional phone numbers um, as attendees. Do you want me to allow them one by one to see if they want to speak? Uh, that would be fine. It's the last four digits of phone number 6657. Would you like to speak? Last four digits, 8072. Would you like to speak? Last four digits, 5085. Would you like to speak? Lorraine, are you able to unmute them in case they don't know how to unmute themselves when you call their number? I cannot. Last four digits, 80868. Would you like to speak? Hi. Hi, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes, 5085. Yeah. If you would state your name and please give your comment. Hi, thank you. This is Jamie Baker. Um, I just want to echo the sentiments of the neighbors tonight. I think this was really informative for me. I am newer to Englewood as well. Um, one of the concerns that I have, obviously, in the area is with the alleys. Um, someone mentioned earlier that they're pretty deplorable. I definitely echo that. They are a mess. Um, second to that is that I am in a newer build, and I am a middle unit, and therefore, I'm about um, a third way up our alley. So. I, it's very high of importance to me that whoever we go with, first of all, this should definitely be left up to vote, but that we've on our second trash, trash hauler now because our, our first one refused to do alley pickup. Obviously, I cannot, um, especially in mucky conditions, walk these giant barrels around to 285 to the front of my house on Ogden. Um, you know, I'm a 30 something abled person and this just isn't feasible. So I can only imagine what this would be like for the seniors in our community. Um, I do think whatever direction we go needs to be, whether it's left up to the consumer or not, must be alley pickup required. And I apologize if I didn't read a PDF or something on this um, that's been socialized, but I, I don't um, I don't think we're in a place with all of the new construction and some of the kind of multifamily dwellings that are popping up here and there. And further, more of the um, cornerstone homes throughout Inglewood to go away from alley pickup. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there as my commentary here tonight. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Lorraine, do you show anything else at the moment? No, I do not, Chair Ward. All right, so that will close our public comment period. Uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, members, uh, we have a choice to make, I suppose. Uh, if everyone wants to respond to public comment, that's going to take some time and leave little time left for the remainder of our agenda. Uh, I have a few things that I would like to say based on the public comment that we've received. I showed Jeff and Marcy both have their hands raised. Uh, so this is one of those things where I'm just gonna kind of go with the flow uh, and as the committee wants. Uh, Jeff, you were first to have your hand raised, so please go ahead. Thank you, Chair Ward, and thank you everyone who's provided a public comment. I don't intend to respond, um, but I actually wanted to request that uh, Chair Ward, perhaps, or Vice Chair Green, summarize the process of where we are in this process, because from a number of the comments, there, there are several misconceptions. One being that any hauler has been chosen, um, as well as a number of other comments. So I would request that the chair and the vice chair just address the process because no decisions have been made in any way. Only city council can do that. And they would decide whether it goes to a vote or whether they decide. We are simply a study committee. Thank you, Jeff. Marcy is next. I see you have your hand raised, Carson. I'm, I'll leave the floor to you uh, <laughs> as far as Jeff's comments just occurred, uh, but we'll have Marcy go uh, first. Marcy, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. You'll need to unmute. Okay, sorry. I always forget to do that. Um, I will also let either vice chair or the chair speak to some of those comments, but I would like to ask one question because of one of the comments that were made. And I would like to ask how many people on this committee belong to CASE? And Chair Ward, if you know, or anybody else knows, I would like to know how many members are with case, thank you. I, I think that's a completely unreasonable question. I, I don't see what relevance it has. There are committee members who've been approved. I know in, in cases is a group of citizens, people come, people go. There's, you don't sign a membership card. It's simply a group of people who are interested in, in similar issues, whether that be gardening, whether that be energy, whether that be trash, any number of things. So I think it's a completely irrelevant and inappropriate question. Well, I will tell you, Member Frazier, I don't believe that's the case because I think the citizens of this city should know who's sitting on this committee and what ties they have. I mean, I know that there is a case member who is liaison to council. And so, yeah, I don't think it's inappropriate at all because if you have so many people on one committee that represents or stands for a certain agenda, then I think it is a fair and reasonable question. So if someone would like to answer that question for me, I would really appreciate it. I am a member of CASE. Okay, who else? I'm a member of CASE. And who else? This Can is I like ask McCarthy's again, list. who else? So I would propose that the chair and vice chair catch us up on the process rather than engaging in an inappropriate and ridiculous ongoing interrogation. This is not in inappropriate, Member Frazier, so please stop saying that to me. You were the one, you were, no, it isn't. You were the one, Member Frazier, who held your baby up to council. Uh, and congratulations on your baby. But this however, is, it looks like you were showing yeah. friends your baby. So it's but not inappropriate. Right. Well, Marcy, it's not inappropriate. This, this has got to stop. Yeah, it's not inappropriate to have an agenda. I have an agenda. I want to see more people recycle. Well, well case does have an agenda because I have it in writing. So if you, order, if you want to go ahead, address this is that, this you go order. ahead. Member Brown, please stop. I will mute you if this continues. Member Fraser, your point of order. 
point of order would be a request that there not be a question and answer period if someone wishes to respond to public comment or reiterate um, where we are in the process i'd i'd again uh, reiterate my suggestion to the chairs to update as to where we are in the process this has nothing to do with anything uh, as chair of this meeting i do concur that a back and forth personal discussion between members is inappropriate uh, if Member Brown would please refrain from continued discussion as well as any of the other members on the personal lives of the members, uh, in, individuals who it's are interested in It's not personal lives, Chair Ward. Uh, you are not entitled to interrupt me, uh, so please stop. Uh, the members who are involved in case uh, can choose to disclose their association with that private organization if they choose to do so. Likewise, anyone who wishes to deny affiliation with case I am personally not affiliated with CASE. I've never been to a CASE meeting. I'm personally acquainted with several CASE members, uh, but I'm not a member of CASE. I can also do so. Uh, the question has been asked. Uh, it has been answered in as much as it's going to be answered. Uh, now, if we can return to the rest of the business of this committee and the response to public comment, I would certainly appreciate it. Carson, uh, if you would like to respond to some of the things that may have been heard in public comment regarding the scope and duties of this committee. Sure. Um, thanks for the suggestion, member. And there's clearly, um, so first I'd like to say in regard to transparency, the some people mentioned how the city had the three meetings and I believe that's how most of us got involved. I went to one of those meetings and spoke up. I think uh, member Frazier might've gone to all three, um, I, I, two of them and other, you know, I believe we all, you know, had an interest in this once we heard about it. Um, and then as far as transparency, the transparency has been increased overall, I think citywide committees, et cetera, because now they're all be all of these meetings are being recorded. And you can, you know, if you have an interest in knowing what's gone on, every one of these meetings is recorded and posted. And I understand that that can be a pain because trying to keep up with all of the info on the city by listening to multi hour meetings is ridiculous. And I'm a proponent of and have been prompting city council to push for automated transcriptions of all meetings, which I think we should do um, since the technology is available and that would make it so much easier for everyone to know what's going on. But that's my personal view. And I hope that people will start asking city council for that because it's actually very inexpensive and they could do that and make it so much easier for everyone to keep up. Okay, back to transparency. It is all there if you're willing to listen to the meetings. And then as far as like what has happened, the city had three meetings to get public input. I believe this, at least one of those meetings was almost 300 people who showed up and the city did a pretty good job of documenting all that input. Um, all of that is posted on the city website. You can see the, the, the chart that was made, uh, tallies of all the input. They did do a, an online form trying to get people to put input in. I was not a fan of that form. I felt like it was biased. I tried to answer the questions and gave up because there weren't even options on it that, you know, fit for what I thought. So I, I have, you know, feelings about that form and I would understand people being um, turned off by that. I don't come to this from case or from anything other than wanting to have long, good long-term decisions for the city made. Um, you know, one of the most commonly complained about things, and I share this complaint, is the fact that most of the providers available have dropped alley service. And one of the, one of the things that I've pushed for from the beginning is if the city is going to consider doing this, going to a single hauler for all of the benefits that, you know, you can hear and you can read in writing or listen to all the discussions we've had. You know, there are um, potential benefits from an environmental standpoint, um, less um, wear and tear on the alleys, less trucks, um, et cetera. The, the, the things that matter to me the most is if the city's gonna consider this, 
then we must require alley and street service. And that's what the original RFP that was made prior to this committee meeting did require. So the in June of 2020, prior to the first meeting of this committee, um, there was a, a previous version of this committee that was informal, that worked with um, uh, uh, Maria, the D'Andrea, um, the director of, I'm sorry, uh, as far as her position, but they put together an RFP. So a request for proposal that was put out and any providers could respond to it. We only had two providers respond and that was Waste Management and Republic. And neither of them responded completely in line with what the request for proposal said. And this committee was formed of citizens. We all are volunteering and we've had a lot of meetings. I mean, we're all putting time into this because we care one way or another, um, you know, to, to have input on behalf of citizens. And, you know, I encourage anyone who has specific cares to do exactly what you all did today, come to our meetings and speak up, write to us. Um, the list of us is available on the city site. I care a lot about what citizens think. Um, and I know everyone else does too. Like we're, we're trying to do the best job of taking into account what citizens care about. So first of all, this RFP was put out, two companies responded, then this committee started to meet. This committee was formed of citizens to consider the responses to that request for proposal. And we started going down that path. Um, Director D'Andrea walked us through them. We all did our own evaluation of them. And the outcome of several meetings was we as a group decided that the original RFP did not cover what was necessary based on the input of all of us. And we recommended to city council that they reject the responses to the original RFP and allow us to participate in creating a new RFP. City Council accepted that. And now that's what we're doing is if you look at our, if you listen to our last two meetings, what we've been doing is we've been working through all of the details to define a new RFP, taking into account all the input we've had from this committee and the people that we as committee members have talked to and um, the people who, citizens who've come forward and shared their thoughts. And tonight was the most we've received of that within our meetings. And I appreciate all of you putting forward um, the details of what you shared. And almost every issue that has, I took six pages of notes just now from everything you all said, um, almost everything that was brought up is currently in our discussions. These are things that we're talking about in regard to fees and penalties and alley. And um, I think one thing that was huge is hearing how many people are concerned about size of containers and that'll have to be um, included in our discussions more completely. Um, but I would like to assure you being someone who is not for or against this, and I'll tell you right now, just being upfront, the only way I'm gonna be for it is if cost is competitive with the best rate out there right now and service improves, meaning we get alley service. If penalties are incurred, then the citizen does get some of it, that we're incentivizing the service to do a really good job and that recycling actually does get recycled. And that's something I brought up because I'm aware of the fact that China stopped buying our recycling and that there's you know a lot of recycling that is collected that ends up in landfills. And I think that's an extremely important thing to consider. So. All of these points are being considered. I, I appreciate everything everyone's brought forward and I will, you know, on my own part, make sure that I continue to represent these concerns and I'm sure everyone else will as well. I don't know if that sums everything up, but that's my attempt. Thank you, Vice Chair uh, Green. I will note for the record uh, that Member Borman has joined us uh, just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, so he's here now. Uh, I don't really have anything to add to Carson's comments that hasn't already been said, uh, but I, I would like to emphasize uh, there is no active proposal. I've already said that once. The proposals that were submitted were rejected. 
So whoever gave out information that we were adopting waste management either lied or did not know what they were talking about. And so I hope that the people that they talk to uh, will consider the source the next time they get information from that person. Um, just uh, to finish one more thing, Chair Ward, can I just say one? Absolutely. So just I, what I didn't finish out is kind of the where we're going with this. So this committee doesn't have the ability to make a choice for the city. All the, the, the what this committee is doing is we've been given the um, the role request of evaluating originally just evaluating the responses to a proposal. Now that's gone through that iteration and now we're creating a new request for proposal. And then once the responses to that new request for proposal come in, we'll evaluate those and then we'll make a recommendation to council. And our recommendation to council could include that it goes to ballot. It, it, you know, there's nothing that's decided that this isn't going to ballot yet. What's been decided is to have public input through the creation of this committee after they already took in a lot of public input by those three meetings so that the city is getting public input and taking it into account and being transparent with all of our efforts so uh if any other committee members have comments to add relative to the public comment that has already occurred please raise your hand now otherwise we will move on to the business portion of our agenda Thank you. I see uh, Director DeAndre has joined the meeting. Uh, you have the floor, Maria. Thank you very much. And uh, I will go back and uh, watch the beginning of the meeting as well. So I'm aware of the public comments that were made. So tonight we'll continue on with our agenda. So we were going to first circle back with a couple of items that we had talked about um, a little bit, but never really came to final comment on. In this month since we've met, I've also been able to do some outreach to different communities. So you'll see that here, I was gonna follow up with some research on how they structured their contract um, increases. So you'll see that later in the agenda. But the first two items that we're gonna talk about tonight are composting and green waste, and then large item pickup. So we'll start with the composting and green waste. And um, as you may recall, so we'll break this down into two topics. First, the I think I have the <clears throat> composting first and then the green waste. So for composting, we did include it in the original RFP that there would be weekly pickup and on a year round basis and that the, the standard container would be provided by the waste hauler. So you had to basically opt in or add, an, in other words, add an additional cost to your service if you wanted to have um, composting. This is similar to other organizations, um, but there are cities like Lafayette, Arvada who have included composting as a base service within their, within their um, base proposal. For the green waste, we included weekly collection from May 1st through November 1st, thinking that this would be the time when you would generate the most leaves, uh, grass clippings, and other types of green waste material from around your yard. And that would be, um, you would use your own containers that could be reusable or those compostable bags that you can buy. And then the hauler would take it to some facility where it would be recycled or reused into another product. Um, both the pricing for both of those options were quite high and there were was a minimum number of households that needed to participate um, before either one would consider offering that program for the city. We have since also talked about that there's other providers out there who could potentially do the same thing and putting out another RFP that might just focus on composting itself outside of this RFP for garbage and recycling collection. So that's another option to consider and we've talked about that. Um, so going first to composting. So should we make composting um, part of the base service or as an additional service? If the base service, can people opt out? Um, and if so, does this change the cost for them, higher or lower? 
And should the, how should we st structure that service in the new RFP? Um, that sort of thing. So do you want to start there with just the composting or do you want to talk about both composting and green waste at the same time? Uh, to me, they fit together. I see okay. uh, Carson has raised his hands. Uh, and this is kind of his his baby. So uh, Carson, go ahead. Well, I guess my first question is just, it. do you also then have separate the, the concept of yard waste as it currently exists and is included without extra fees by all existing providers? Yes, so I think what we also talked about last time, uh, Vice Chair, was that we would have, we would include in that base service that you could put out a certain number of bags, you sent me that information, and then that could be placed outside of your container and it might be trash, it might be green waste, it might be um, bundles of tree limbs, and that that would be considered part of the base service. So composting and or green waste would be on top of that. Okay, so we're, because we haven't, so are we gonna, because we haven't already discussed officially putting in that yard waste aspect in the base, and have no, we? No, we have not, but, no. And so that's gonna come up later? That's not part of this discussion right now? It, it is right now, yes. We, we kind of punted on this one because I think you were unavailable when we were talking about this. Yeah, I, I got really sick. Meeting. I missed our yeah. last meeting, but I did listen to everything. Okay, yep. So I think we, we forgot, forwent um, our final kind of discussion and vote on this particular topic, but where we wanted to go on both composting and green waste. But we also, one thing that ha does affect this that we have already discussed and, in, and decided to include is that we wanna have the new RFP include various services as um, basically pick and choose so that we, we could, you know, green waste could be an option that they list and show us how much that would affect the price. Composting could be an option, right? I mean, so we already are deciding that the way we structure the new RFP would be that these things could be presented as optionals. Correct. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's going to be my next test is how do I lay that out in a format where I could bring that back to the committee to take a look at, to look at all those options. And then it's almost like an a la carte menu I, I envision where you can pick and, and choose what different options you want to put together as a package. Well, I, I don't know who else might want to discuss, but I'll just throw out what my suggestion would be. I, I would suggest and, you know, think we should discuss first and I could make a motion as such if so desired, but that we, um, for the base trash service require what's currently um, standard, which is um, what I sent to Director D'Andrea from my current provider. And it's been the same that I've had from all providers for 20 years at my location. I've gone through four providers, but um, at least five separate bags um, um, next to the um, tote and, um, and or um, four foot length bundles of branches and my current provider has a limit on that of four at a time. I've had other providers that have allowed for basically unlimited four foot length bundled branches, at, you know, whatever max weight. Um, and, and this is for specifically being able to deal with yard waste whenever it's necessary to deal with it, not any particular time of year. And that would be, you know, obviously this is something that would just go to landfill it's not the most environmentally great but it's to to keep parity with what people are already used to and then the compost and green waste be um a la carte options that we have structured um for them to pro you know propose what that would cost on top of it i see hands raised so i'll let you call on people chair lord thanks carson uh brenda you're next Yes, thank you. So <clears throat> in response to Carson's request that there's kind of a, they pick up whatever they we put out there request, keep in mind that this is a, an RFP 
for at most a 96 gallon container, unless of course, and that being less, if somebody wants a smaller container, which is a great idea and answers a lot of the concerns addressed tonight. But this is at most 96 gallons at each home day at a time. And if we wanna keep the cost down, we're already doing the alley and the, and the front way service. We can't just say, oh, just take whatever we put out there because it leads to the problem of our um, alley trash dumping. So I'm gonna say that this needs to segue to two different conversations. Composting green waste is the first situation and I agree with everybody, that's an a la carte service. I would think, in fact, I would find that in most times when I have all this extra trash, it has a lot to do with branches and trees that I cut around here and leave. And that is an a la carte service and I would be willing to pay more for them to come and even maybe even give me a different bin. I don't know, maybe that might be their solution. Give us a, a green waste bin, give us a composting bin. That's our a la carte service. As far as putting any of the other trash out there, herein lies the rub. We can't just say, oh, here's my mattress. Oh, here's this stuff in the alley. And that's gonna have to segue to a different conversation about um, com community dumpsters. And, and I'm gonna at, take this opportunity to ask that, um, I thought we were gonna talk to code enforcement before we kind of, when we were in this discussion, I thought we'd hear from code enforcement um, because they're not picking up stuff that is dumped by other citizens outside. I have three mattresses in my alley and a couch and a bunch of other things. And they've put tickets on people's houses, but no one's moving them. So I don't expect that for the price point that we want, that we can ask a trash company to please just remove whatever goes up and down this alley or up and down the trees. That's that is that's just for the price point we want. End of discussion. Thanks, Brenda. Uh, Jeff. Please excuse me for holding my baby for a moment while my wife puts my three-year-old to bed. I hope it doesn't offend anyone. Um, so I wanted to. Um, kind of get some clarity on what exactly it is we're talking about here. Um, are we talking, Carson, just bundles of yard waste like outside the trash can? Well, I, I wish um, Director DeAndre had included what I sent in the public record. I, I think it deserves to be in the agenda. Um, or I could share my screen if you want me to switch to it, but I, I sent like what the current policy is for my current provider, which is technically served by waste management, but it's allow for trash in the 96 gallon toter plus five bags beside it. Um, also branches cut to four foot lengths and bundled in 18 inch diameter four at a time. And in the 20 years I've been in my house, uh, every provider I've had, that has been automatically included in whatever the trash costs. So currently that's provided for $16 a month by, and it's serviced by waste management. So arguing that waste management can't provide that when that's their current service, I don't, I don't get that. I, I, what, I'm, what I'm an advocate for is not reducing the service if we're going to take away choice, we can't reduce the service that everyone already has because every provider right now without extra fees takes away yard waste. And it's not, to me, it's not acceptable to increase fees or create a need for scheduling or paying for anything when that's the way it already is included by everybody. So for the sake of the RFP, I guess I'm trying to think through whether this should be, you know, just included in the base or like an a la carte option, because it kind of depends on the price you receive, whether, you know, let's say we get bids for $14 a month or something. And if you wanted to add it a la carte for like two or $3 a month, then that would still be right on par with the cost we're talking here. So I'm trying to think through what's the best way to structure this for the sake of the RFP. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's include with yard waste as, you know, it sounds like a lot of the haulers are doing that anyways. Um, and maybe it's also without an a la carte because like me, for instance, I don't have 
yard waste that I really have picked up much. I have a little spot in the backyard. I try to compost, but I'm pretty bad at it. Um, and, you know, so, so it's, it's one of those things that may, a lot of people probably do want to make use of, but, um, I don't know. I'd really love to hear others thoughts on how best to address this in the RFP specifically. May I? That, that's getting to the bottom line. Carson, you and I, maybe you and I produce more waste and we should pay more. Don't you think then say some of the citizens we heard from tonight, they really don't go through much. They live alone, little old lady. She just needs a 32 gallon container. What if she can pay $10 every three months? And then you and I, we're like, you know what? I want to go ahead and I want to get the recycling. I want to go ahead and get, I want to get the compost. And I want to be able to throw whatever I want out there. But I want to pay $16. Do you see where I'm getting? I'm going with a la carte services, but I am talking about where, and this is, this gets to Jeff's discussion. Where do we kind of make our base? What's our base minimum pickup? Like, here's what we're bidding on, and here's all your a la carte services added on. What's our, I kind of thought, and that's why I said it, that our 96-gallon container was, that's what they're bidding on. Is that how we're talking about? Is that how we want to structure this, everybody? I, I think that's what we've been talking about. But, uh, you know, I, I am inclined to agree with Carson on this. It doesn't make sense to me that uh, it, this that fewer services provided citywide by a single hauler would cost more than what more services cost to a handful of citizens across the city. Uh, I don't know if everybody followed that, but currently uh, there's a hauler that serves only a portion of the city because we have multiple haulers active in the city. And they have these, uh, you know, service levels that Carson's indicated include extra trash uh, outside of the can. The RFPs that we got, not only do they cost more than that, but they also don't include those extra services that he's getting right now at his base rate. And there seems to be a disconnect there. I don't follow why it would come back that way. I mean, the possibility of why the their base rate is higher, I mean, the main possibility is because we required alley and street. We know that that's probably a bump up of cost. But when it comes to like, I'm, I don't feel like I'm representing just me. And the truth is I have, I could get away with a very small trash can, you know, probably 96% of my pickups a year because I hardly produce any trash and I mostly have recycling. But what happens is a couple times a year, I'll end up having my whole driveway full of branches and have to put hours into cutting up branches. And I'm not going to be able to haul those anywhere. And I'm not going to be able to wait until some designated pickup time because it's my responsibility to keep my sidewalks clear and branches eventually come down over the sidewalk. And, and the fact is right now, citizens in this um, city do not have to pay extra with their hauler to have bundles of branches and bags of leaves taken away those couple times a year whenever they end up collecting them or having them as part of their trash. So maybe it's specifically yard waste. I mean, does that mean they're going to have to look in the bags and see that they're, it's not trash? I don't think we're talking about no, the issue of people about having a whole bunch of extra trash on a regular basis. We're talking about yard waste when it happens and it's currently included talking, and should continue to be included in the base service if we're taking away choice. Well, that's why we're doing this RFP because and we're talking about not so much waste. We're talking about labor. People got to get paid, get out of the truck. And you're right. Was that all, all that stuff should have been included in the first RFP. It was a disgrace that we only got two people and two companies and that the price was higher than what we pay now. So that's what we're here to do is how to get this cost down. And in, and in lieu of that, that's one of the reasons I said extend the contract because what we have over time with the uh, CFI that we've got to add, this because CFI, CPI is a total contract value that if you take 
what was it? Uh, let's just say a thousand subscribers at sixteen dollars every three months times ten years. This is a contract, you guys, that is of, of over a million dollars value to these to these companies. And that's what we want to do is create this. Look, you can have all this business, but you do got to pick up all our stuff. So if that's what we got to structure in this RFP then do so, but I just don't know how to do that and how to get them to pick up the three mattresses that are sitting in my alley right now. So Thanks, Brenda. Um, uh, Jeff? Yeah, I, I would, um, I agree we should be offering the same level of service uh, that is currently offered. Um, and if it's currently offered, I'd, I'd love to see the specific language of like how it's defined so we can try to match that, um, but I'd support that in the in the base bid. I don't if it's if it's truly currently offered by all the active servers servicers in Englewood, then I agree it shouldn't change the price significantly. Um, I still think you could probably include it like include it in the base and then separately as all the cart and see if it has an impact on price proposals. Um, that's probably what I'd suggest doing just so we have the most data points, but I, I don't know. I'm very open, but I, I agree we should maintain service level. So, uh, just to clarify, it's not currently offered by all providers in England. And I can personally attest to that because, uh, my Republic contract is very much, here's your 96 gallon bin, fill it up. If you do, it costs you this much money. If you don't, it costs you this much money. And if you put anything outside that 96 gallon bin, we're going to charge you for it. So uh, Republic is very uh, no frills, uh, nothing extra. At least the contract I have with them is. Same with my neighbor. All right, uh, Carson, you Mar have your hand up still? Maria, yeah. had, uh, Maria had her hand up too, did you see? I did not. Yeah, just a, just a point too, um, if, if you wanted to, you know, again, if the, the point is to keep the cost as low as possible for those homes who do have extra bags on a regular basis, then they could buy another can or rent another can and have two cans available. That is another option. So then they can put in trash, they can put in green waste, you can put in whatever um, into that second can. And again, keep the base service as low as possible. Uh, that makes sense. Carson? Um, well, I just wanted to point out um, that this I see this 100% separate from large item pickup. This isn't about mattresses or, you know, big things. This is about what is, and, and Chair Ward, I, I hear you, Republic is the one service provider I haven't had in 20 years. I had Lee's, American Disposal, Waste Connections, Waste Management, Waste Services, and they all include this in their base service. Um, and I know that there's going to be a lot of, like, we just had a whole bunch of members of the public speaking out, you know, clearly they didn't know the whole, not everybody had been informed about everything that is actually going on and that we haven't picked anything and we're not forcing anything yet, but if we're... It, if ultimately this does become a single hauler thing with, you know, these limited opt outs, we are taking away choice. And there's a lot of people who do have leaves they have to pick up when they have to pick them up. And, you know, I know that it's been talked about, about doing green waste and, and composting. And, and those are great things that are out on, although so far green waste, we haven't had an at home pickup, um, proposal for that. And I think it's ridiculous to require having to take it somewhere because who can fit it all? I mean, on my small property, when I rake leaves, it's like 12 giant compacted bags after I stomp them all into the bag is with my full weight, you know, to ma minimize use of plastic. Like, but people need to not have this taken away from them and have to pay extra. And a separate container is not having to pay for an extra container year round because once or twice a year, I have a bunch of yard waste that I have to get rid of based on the city's laws of keeping the sidewalks clear. That, that's not acceptable or appropriate. And, uh, can, and 
you know, the bundles of branches wouldn't fit in a container anyway. All right, uh, so Brenda? Well, Carson, don't you think, and this is a question for you, don't you think that these companies need to know like how much extra waste they can expect to pick up if we do some kind of, and how do we word that? Unlimited branches? Uh, instead of an extra 96 gallon container, we just go whatever, because you're talking about, oh, you don't, we're not talking about, you know, mattresses and blah, blah, blah. But you know, think about the general public and what the company is being asked to do. Don't they have a right to say, we're not going to haul off um, all your junk? And therein lies the rub is where we're going to get stuck having to define just what's sitting outside this container. So therefore, I would... Um, I agree with that um, the idea of having of paying for an extra container if you need it would probably at least keep our RFP within some kind of parameters and definition. And that way we're not going to get caught up on uh, how many bundles, you know, I, I think that's just going to get a little too convoluted. She said that was a question for me and I'd like to respond. Yeah. Go ahead. It, 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 it is defined. We can go by the definitions that the providers already provide. And over a month ago, I forwarded Director D'Andrea the specifics of what waste management currently includes for $16 a month. We're not talking about something new. We're talking about what they already know they can do because they're already doing it and they've been doing it for 20 years. This isn't new. Where's that language? New is green we waste have compost. Have so Carson, I didn't speak over you guys. I said we all get. I, I mean, let let's propose a motion. Somebody propose a motion. All right. Although I know, uh, Member Brinker wanted to speak. Yeah. Uh, just a reminder to everybody. Uh, we do have rules of order for a reason. Uh, I want to make sure that these meetings uh, tonight and in the future don't devolve into a. Uh, contentious back and forth. So, uh, Member Brinker, you have the floor. Um, I, I hear what you're both um, saying, Member Hubka and, and Vice Chair Green. Those are very good points, and we have to figure out how to how to navigate between them two. Um, we can't guarantee that the respondents of the next RFP will offer exactly the same as your base service at the same cost. It's up to them um, what they propose. Uh, that would be nice and we can ask and we can hope, but I don't think we can have any guarantee that that's what they would respond, um, I guess, unless we specify that it has to be included in their costs. But as to Brenda's point, that may lead to them increasing the cost because they would have no idea about actually the scale of how many bags they'll, they're collecting, how many uh, um, of their workers would have to get out of the truck. Um, Etc. So I don't know that we know. Um, and one other option that we haven't talked about, but I'm not saying I'm advocating for this yet, but an option is uh, extra tags that each household could be given as part of the contract uh, that they could use for extra leaf bags or bundles when they choose during the year. I don't know if that's, you know, 10 bags of leaves or bundles of branches. And you can decide whether you want to put that out on October 7th or November 15th or what. Thank you, Christine. Uh, I see uh, Jeff, uh, Carson, and Dane's hand raised. I'm going to go to Marcy uh, right now uh, to give her a chance to speak. Yeah, I just, uh, I agree with Carson because I have a huge tree in my front yard. I mean, I probably use about 20 bundles and I'm like you, Carson, I probably don't weigh as heavy as you do, but I do stomp on them to stop the plastic and I get in as many leaves as I can. And I've had okay. uh, other haulers pick up as many as I put out there and I've never had to pay a dime extra. 
So if there are all if there are some haulers that are already doing that, which I know they are, then I don't understand why that could not be in you know our proposal that they are doing the same thing as they've always been doing. So I'm agreeing with you, Carson, anyway. And I just wanted to let you know, I mean, I've never had any problems with them picking up branches as long as they're a certain length. If they go beyond a certain length, you have to cut them. But I've never, ever been charged more than my monthly fee. So I just wanted to put my two cents in. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Uh, we'll go to Dane next. Um, so I generally actually agree with Carson that we should include that, you know, we should be able to put out, I think, the same number of um, bags or groups of, of branches and stuff like that, you know, as the service that we currently provide. Oh, you're such a good dog. Brenda, uh, you're, if you could please mute while you're not speaking. Uh, we're catching a lot of background noise. Sorry for um, the interruption, Dean. Go ahead. Um, so we should be able to put out the same number as, as we do now. And the nice thing for the haulers, I think, is it's not going to be an every week occurrence. I think that that is uh, not going to be the case for most people. And some years they might actually only get it one time a year, um, you know, where people will rake their leaves and it's going to be taken away. Um, and other years it might be four or five times because we have the leaves and then we might get you know, a couple of big snowstorms in the spring or in the fall, but as a overall for the whole year, we're really not talking about huge numbers of days that they're going to be having to get out of the truck. So they might bump up our cost a little bit, but I think that is, can probably be whatever you want to call it, amortized over a course of a year that it won't alter our cost that much. And I think it's a reasonable thing for us to consider as a normal amount of service. Now, if somebody wants to do a la carte add on of green waste so that instead of going to the garbage, it goes to a compost or to a, a recycling pile, then I think that's reasonable as well. But um, I, I, I think Carson is right on this. A point of information, question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, um, uh, I, for, for Member Borman and Vice Chair Green, um, are you thinking this would be limited to green waste and not, for instance, um, uh, Brenda's five mattresses, her neighbor's five mattresses? I think that's a separate issue. Sorry, this is Dane chiming in. Um, mostly so we would because specify, I think that that, okay. We'd yeah, because I think waste. we have. Well, I'm not even sure we have to specify green waste, but we have to specify it's not, it's not, you know, just like anytime you have construction debris, you throw it out there. It has to be within, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly how to define it, but I think we should look at Carson's contract because I'm pretty sure I remember that's what our contract exactly says too. We're with waste management. We've been with the same company since we moved here. Um, and it definitely has specific wording to it, but I think, you know, like even if you, I don't know, had, say you had to replace a toilet and nobody wants to use toilet or I assume nobody wants to use toilet, but you know, you should be able to probably put that out there and that's one thing for them to go out. But again, it's not gonna be every single week. It's part of the cost of doing business within within reason, up to a specific size or specific weight, maybe four or five things per week. Yeah, I think the industry term used for that by and large is large items. So appliances, there's usually a list of exclusions on any contract. But yeah, we, we would definitely want to separate those out because the industry certainly does. And it just makes sense. Um, uh, Carson, you are next. Well, go ahead and let um, member Hubka speak because she wanted to say something and then I'll say what I want and then I'll make a motion. Sounds good, Brenda. Well, you know, that was just my only point really agreeing with everybody is that you know, we, we, we are, we're gonna get stuck in these definitions. What is green waste? Is it a Christmas tree? The Christmas tree is very heavy. 
Um, right now, everybody drags in. So if we're going to talk about how many bundles you're allowed to have, we're going to have to talk about, you know, outside of that container, what kind of waste and how much waste and all of that specific information. So that's really, I wasn't trying to argue the point that they shouldn't provide this. I'm trying to argue the point that we want to be really money conscious and we want to know how much it's going to be to pick up the Christmas tree every year. And if it's that much more money and we can't get buy-in from the city, then maybe we ought to just grab our Christmas trees and put them and, and take them down to Miller Field. So that's what I'm getting at. When I say 96 gallon container, I want to know how much that's going to be. And if we want to add a bunch of extra bags at the side, how much would that be? So really, that was my only point. And, and that I don't want to get caught up in the mire of it's a bag of trash versus a toilet versus a Christmas tree. Gotcha. Thanks, Brenda. Uh, I'm having small flashbacks to the night we originally discussed this and we ran out of time. So Carson, if you would, <laughs> please go ahead and introduce your, uh, your motion. Well, just to respond to what Member Hubka said, well, and um, Member Borman. So there is a definition and I've seen the definition over, like I said, my 20 years of, you know, two max, maybe three times a year having to use it and never having had to pay a dollar for putting out bundles of branches when necessary. Um, it's, this, this is something that they already provide. Um, Republic apparently is the only one who hasn't done this. Um, and it is a pretty clear definition. And I would, and I've shared this now multiple times with director DeAndrea and hoped that it would be sent out. The first time I shared all the details of the waste services um, plan, she did um, share that with you all, but I think these need to be included in the public record in the agenda, the details of what these are. So what I'll do is I'll make my motion and I'll read what waste management is currently providing, which is actually lesser than it used to be, because this is a fewer number of um, bundles than used to be allowed, but it would certainly be enough to cut up a Christmas tree and have it go out if that was what you needed, because not everyone has the luxury of having a vehicle large enough to haul a Christmas tree, you know, or the ability to do that, et cetera. Maybe they had it anyway. So my motion is I propose that in our base trash service, we include um, equivalent uh, yard waste uh, disposal service to what is commonly available by most providers with a definition similar to, and now I'm reading what waste management sent me, allowance for trash, in the 96 gallon toter plus five bags beside it or a 32 gallon trash can of your own containing, anyway, I'll stop adding, but that's what it says. And then it says also branches cut in four foot lengths and bundled in 18 inch diameter up to four at a time. And on this, what they sent, it doesn't say the weight, but I, I believe the weight. I, I already provided director D'Andrea with um, what the current weight limit on those was. I think it's 25 pounds, but I'm not certain. It might've been 30, but whatever that is. Um, I, I move that we make that a uh, included part of our base um, service because that's what is currently available. And, and if, we're re if we do end up recommending a single hauler, to city council to consider, we don't wanna take that away from people who already have it. And if these providers can't respond to an RFP to include what they're already providing, then I would say that's a count against them. So, you know, I guess that was a mix of opinion and motion. So the motion is that we include in the base trash service allowance for trash and the, all, we, whatever the size tote is. So let me back off of that because obviously we're considering having different size totes. So the motion is, I apologize for all the reviews. I'm trying to make it simple. The motion is we include in the base trash service um, up to five additional bags besides 
the tote um, and up to four bundles of branches cut to four foot lengths and weighing up to whatever that weight is that's the current limit. That's bags been, of leaves or ba I mean, bags of green waste or bags of anything? They, none of the providers I've had have specified what that is. I know that it always ends up being leaves and you know, who's going to have five extra bags regularly of anything else. But I don't think we should um, specify because sometimes people clean out their houses and have a bunch of trash and they should be able to use this too and the providers don't specify that and if it fits in a bag then it should be okay because that's just the way it's been and that's what people are used to so we have a motion, motion on the floor uh it's been seconded by member frazier uh lorraine would you please call the roll chair ward yes Vice Chair Green? Yes. Member Gorman? Yes. Member Brinker? Jane. Member Brinker, if you can repeat that. Abstain. Thank you. Member Brown? Yes. Member Frazier? Yes. Member Hupka? No. Yes. We have six yeses, one abstain, and one no. Motion passes. We will add that to the base level of service. Does anyone have anything to add on the composting and green waste discussion? If not, we will move to the next slide. I see Christine's hand. Um, uh, this conversation was just about um, putting green waste into trash that would go to a trash facility. Can you remind me, did we make a decision on um, offering, a, a comp offering compost as an add-on optional service and the same with green waste? Uh, I don't recall directly if we have voted on it. I think the committee was moving in the direction of issuing a separate RFP for composting, at least. Um, uh, if, uh, if anyone has any comments, we could take comments. And if not, I can make a motion in that regard. I see two hands raised. Uh, Carson? Um, what you said, Member Brinker, is my impression as well, and, and what I would also before, I think composting and green waste are additional separate services that we should try to get as optionals. And we know that maybe composting provided by these, by the providers that can do waste aren't going to be competitive with what you guys found with that other company. But, you know, maybe green waste could be. So, I mean, I think we should, and I would use green waste if it was easy to use and meaning I didn't have to take it anywhere and it was available when I needed it. But um, so I, I think that those should be optional ones that we get as well. Jeff? Yeah, my recollection was that we agreed to include composting as an add-on option, uh, optional for people to pay pay more and opt into, no one would be forced to compost. Um, and that I think we tried to make it as flexible as possible that the haulers, you know, who are proposing trash recycling, hopefully many of them, um, that they can include it, but they're not forced to include it. And that it can be a standalone option as well. I'm trying to get the most, you know, options possible, hopefully for the cheapest price possible. That's what no, I, my Maria, understanding was. Yeah, that's that's how I remember it. Maria, uh, can you clarify? Do you recall? Yeah, we talked about just what uh, Member Fraser just said is that we can 
include it as an option and see kind of give let them give us ways of how they would structure it whether that be weekly bi-weekly um, and if they don't bid if you will on the composting that we would not penalize them for that so it's kind of an alternate service that they could bid on but we would also then go out with another rfp for some of these smaller um, providers who might give us a better deal citywide on that and i'm sorry jeff i didn't mean to cut you off did you have something to add there no not at all you're good all right, uh, so I see Brenda's hand raised and Kanji, Kanji, this will be the first we've heard from you tonight. So I'm gonna let you go ahead as uh, time wanes. Please do. Thanks, I'll make this quick. I just wanted to get clarification on that. I know that we did agree on that for composting, but that was not clarified for green waste. So are we having two separate line items? I, I think that's at the, at the committee's choice. We can look for both options through a separate RFP. Uh, Brenda? Yeah. Um, composting and green waste. Composting, you know, is leaves, right? Now, if you know that you can put out five extra bags or whatever we decided on in your trash, why would you bother composting for extra money? So therein lies the rub of what we were trying to do is incentivize people to not take stuff to the landfill. But that's already passed, so forget it. Now, let's segue to composting and green waste. I don't think people have an, a good idea of, of, of what those two things are. Um, now, I compost my green waste. I do both. I take the stuff from my, I take my coffee filters and my eggshells and stuff that's not meat, and I put in a little container by the, by the sink, and then <clears throat> when that gets filled, I take it out to the back, and it goes in this big barrel. So what these companies are doing now is they're going to take all your stuff that isn't like meat, stuff that doesn't have to go to the landfill, and that includes your tree limbs and your, and your leaves. I'm sorry? Please go oh, ahead. I think there's just some background. Noise. Oh, the cocking? Christine, where's the cocking? Oh, I think somebody doesn't have it on, on, on mute. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so I, I don't know what to say now because we've already gone to the place where um, we're going to have five bags or whatever of stuff out at the lawn. There's, I don't think there's going to be a real big demand for composting and green waste except for people who are like me and just don't have a bin to take it. So at best, it's kind of like a little 32 gallon jug that you might do with. I mean, really what you wanna do is you wanna compost and green waste your leaves and your branches and you want all that stuff not to go to the landfill. But now we've included it as a base service for trash. So this is kind of pointless. Just saying, Jeff, your thoughts? So uh, Jeff's not actually next, uh, Brenda. So uh, we are at 7.59 right now. Uh, and Dane has his hand raised and has for a while. I think he's going to have to be last to speak tonight uh, as we uh, finish our time at 8 o'clock. Uh, Dane, you have the floor. So I actually just had a question about, um, I guess it's probably for Maria. Um, is is it possible that we can use compost and green waste from the same provider or does it sound like these are completely separate issues because i kind of get the idea that sometimes they're the same and sometimes they're different because uh, i think in the last rfp we were talking about it in terms of was there you know were we going to include green waste well that was just going to be you know just leaves and and, and branches and stuff like that. And then compost sounded like it was separate, almost like more just food waste and things like that, maybe some leaves. But is there a way that we can include in a RF, you know, the second RFP for composting to see if they not only do the, the kitchen scraps, things like that, but also 
the branches and things like that because you know myself personally i'd be fine with paying the extra money um, even if it was included in my base service if i knew it was going to a, a, a green spot now would i be willing to pay all the time for um you know compost you know for a few table scraps and then separately just for the green waste no but if it was all could all be included in the same program i think that that could be very reasonable maria do you have any input yeah so my understanding is that composting is basically green waste plus so just as member hubka was just talking about you can throw eggshells in there coffee grounds anything that might um is would be considered compostable or could break down naturally that you wouldn't throw it in the garbage instead it would go to composting so it takes more effort to separate your garbage even further so now you're recycling you're composting inside your kitchen most normally um but but then it would be plus the green waste so there would be a container you could put leaves branches whatever in there and that would get picked up plus your food scraps that are non-meat i think brenda uh, summarized it quite well okay um yeah i think that you know i think there might be a desire out there from people to actually be able to do that you know it might not be very big but that's the nice thing about having this second rfp is that those of us that really do want to do that can work towards doing that and can organize and uh try and bring it about from the city but it won't necessarily be a required option i think that that is is very reasonable that's my whole input thank you uh dane so question for the committee we're at 803 uh i still have two hands raised uh we can press through to the end of this green waste or we can uh just hit our hard cutoff and resume uh where we are at our next meeting Sounded like we had already resolved it if it was going to be a separate optional line item in the menu of options in the RFP and then an additional separate RFP for uh, composting and green waste. Is that the case? Yeah, I, I feel like it's we had it, we're agreed on it. Me too. Yeah, right. let's move on. Uh, so should we take a motion on that just to make it official? What's the motion? I uh, go ahead, sure. Christine. No, go for it, Jeff. Uh, I think we made this motion in the last meeting, I'm fairly certain, but my motion would be that compost be a non-compulsory service available for opt-in optionally um, and that haulers not be forced to offer compost but if they wish to they can and for standalone compact compost servicers to also bid just for compost so i believe maria said that would be a sep separate rfp that's not a very clean motion but can we just duplicate that for for green waste as well then yeah Seconded. Love you. Love you. So the. Love you. Uh, Lorraine, do you have that motion? I have the motion. I do not know who moved or who. It was moved by Member Fraser and seconded by Member Brinker. Hearing no objection to that call, <laughs> we go, we'll go ahead and call the roll. Chair Ward? Yes. Vice Chair Green? Yes. Member Borman? The park. Yes. Sorry. Member Brinker? Yes. Member Brown? Member Brown? Member Frazier? 
Yes. Member Hubka? Yes. Member Kawanabi? Point of information, can we get clarification? Does this apply as, as both green waste and for uh, composting, Lorraine? Or is this just composting on the, on the record? My motion, I believe, was just composting. I think we already covered the additional green waste. In the okay, that being the case, then yes. But Kanji's comment was to completely duplicate this compost motion. Yeah, for... I thought there was a friendly amendment by by Member yeah. Kawanabe that added to Fra uh, Member Fraser's motion that made it so that we're talking about one for composting, one for green waste under the same terms. Yeah, that was my understanding. That was my proposal. Jeff, well, this there... is Marcy. Can I just interrupt and say yes? I couldn't get my unmute button off. Member Fraser, is do, do you accept that friendly amendment? I guess if it was a standalone from what we're including in the base bid, I feel like that is inherently tied to the motion we discussed previously, unless I'm confused. So I would offer no, it for it, now it, just for composting we can certainly propose a separate item but uh at least to clarify which i think we already did last meeting if i recall correctly let me state my understanding so, so my understanding is so what we already voted on and included is if you want to you can put the the five bags and the four bundles out at any time and it goes with trash which is equivalent to what's currently possible. And then what we're talking about now is additional options for composting and green waste that would be um, potentially things people pay extra for. So if you wanted to pay extra for having your bags of leaves and bundles of branches go to a more environmentally friendly place and jump through whatever hoops the providers require for you to do that because like in our exist our previous responses they weren't even offering that at your home they were requiring you bring it somewhere so that's why i do see these as optional on top of separate from what we've already included in the base waste yeah instead of going to the landfill they would go to a proper organics disposal facility perhaps different compost versus green waste perhaps the same it's up to the why can't we include this in the base price? Well, why can't we include this in the brace base price just like we did with the uh, the extra bags? So we're so in I the would definitely a, increase a the right price now. on a motion. Uh, we're oh, in the middle of a vote on a motion right now. The, uh, the, the clerk knows. The same thing. All right. Lorraine, I'm sorry. I'll, would I'll you, get out of here. Uh, Lorraine, would you please read back what you have as the motion on the floor? So I had made some changes to it based on what Frazier said. So I do not have the full, we will have to listen to the recording for exactly what he said. Okay, so if nobody understands what we're voting on, then I, I don't think that we should be having this vote. Agreed. I agree. Agreed. But can I make one point and this is the last thing I'm gonna to say tonight. On, on clarifying the bid. I think we're getting lost in the weeds or yard waste, so to speak here. Um, because if like Denver, you had a big compost bin, for instance, people could dump their yard waste in if they choose to. Yes, I understand you could leave it out and that may or may not disincentivize composting. Um, but to me, this comes down to like the size of the pail available for compost. If it's a big bin like Denver does, I think Compost Colorado, I think they use smaller bins for like primarily food waste and things like that. Um, so these are things I'd probably want to leave up to the haulers crafting a composting bid to show us what they propose. I would think the same the thing for green waste as well. Yeah, that's true that some of them distinguish green waste from compost. 
All because right. they I, send them to different facilities. I, I Chair Ward. One hand raised. Uh, I personally am starting to get a little tired and uh, much less efficient at this uh, than perhaps I should be. I don't know how everybody else feels, but we are 10 minutes over our meeting time. Chair Ward, um, one thing. Uh, Supervisor Lewis is on and has been texting, asking about if we are going to address large item pickup. You, because he's here, he's made his time. I mean, we may want to just hear his input on that. I don't know if that opens a big can of worms of other stuff. We're already over time. But no, just so I you thought know that. he should have been scheduled to speak. I'm sorry. We did not know that. I did want to talk about large item pickup. Why was he, was he on the agenda to speak tonight? Really, really need to get him on the agenda. And that would be the best fit this because I wanted to hear that too. But it is he way past our time. And I'll point out that this is one of the challenges of taking one hour of public comment at the beginning of our meetings um, is that just sometimes we'll find ourselves unable to do our business. Um, Chair Lew uh, Dave Lewis has uh, texted and said that he's okay with rescheduling. Our next meeting would be two weeks. Uh, I would suggest perhaps opening that meeting with Mr. Lewis um, if uh, the committee is okay with that and perhaps for going public comment for that one session. Um, if everyone is in agreement, I, I think that might be our best plan so that we can actually get some business done in that particular session. I think that'd be great. Thank you. Please. So I'm going to introduce that as a motion. Uh, I move that our next meeting uh, skips the public comment portion for that meeting only. Uh, and uh, we can resume the agenda um, at, that, at that meeting uh, from, from tonight. So are you suggesting that we don't have public comment at our next meeting? That is exactly what the motion I have introduced is, yes. I will second that motion. Brenda Hudka. It's been moved uh, and seconded. Uh, Lorraine, would you call the roll on this motion, please? Chair Ward? Yes. Vice Chair Green? No, I think public input throughout is important. Member Borman? Yes. Member Brinker? No. Member Brown? No. Member Frazier? Yes, we'll have more public comment in the future and more open meetings before anyone votes on this. Member Hupka? Yes, we have to hear from City Code. Member Kawanabe? No, but I think we can have him speak before public comment. Four no's and four yeses. Motion fails. Uh, Member Kawanabe, you had an alternative motion, perhaps? move that we have uh, the speaker present the information around large item pickup prior to public comment. Second. In our next meeting. Well, we've been seconded. One more time at the roll, please, Lorraine. Chair Ward? Yes. Vice Chair Green? Yes. Member Borman? Yes. Member Brinker? Yes. Member Brown? I'm going to abstain. Member Frazier? Yes, good night all. Member Hupka? Yes, good night. Member Kawanabe? Yes. Seven yeses and one abstain. All right, uh, so the first order of business at our next meeting will be to hear from uh, code enforcement. Uh, and then we will proceed with the agenda the rest of the way through, starting with uh, public comment next and going on. Uh, of course, we'll have to approve the minutes of this meeting and do our routine business before we hear from Mr. Lewis. Uh, with that, um, I, I see River Frazier has his hand raised. Um, I am prepared to adjourn this meeting uh, unless uh, Jeff has some burning question. Looks like he's dropped his hand. So I am declaring this meeting adjourned. It is 8.16 PM. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. At all.